guys, I'm Lucy with Ross Monster Rentals, and today I'm going to show you around the Baja, give you all the ins and outs so you can get well acquainted with the vehicle prior to your rental. So before I even get into the individual components of this rig, I'm going to tell you the two most important things right out the gate. I'll reiterate as we continue the video. However, you have a hard shell topper. These are on electric actuators. It is imperative that you lower the topper prior to driving. The topper has two presets. One is going to lift it to its max height. The second is going to lower it to its max height. Be sure that you lower it prior to driving and then only lift it when you're at camp. Anytime that you're messing with the topper on the actuators, just make sure you're on level ground. Second most important thing, moving all the way to the rear of the vehicle. We have a rear door that is also on electric actuators. The fob for that is gonna live on your keychain. So when you're ready to drop the stairs, you're gonna make sure there's nothing in the vicinity. You're gonna press the down button on the fob and hold it until it lowers. So you're gonna hear the engine kind of start to whir down and that's when you let off this button. Be sure that once it's at its max low point, you do not continue to hold the button that can burn out the actuators. Same thing when you close that up, you're gonna hold the up button and hear, until you hear that engine kind of whir down and that's when you'll let off of this actuator. If you go too far in either direction, you'll hear a few clicks. That's definitely when you should go ahead and take your finger off that button. Cool. Now, a few other exterior features before we go inside. You have an upgraded rear bumper on this rig. This is gonna have storage compartments. So if you have anything that you wanna store in here, smelly tennis shoes, great spot to put those. You also have a custom storage panel. So anything that you wanna throw on here, feel free to. We also have a bike rack that you can throw on there as well. Moving along. On the passenger side here, you're gonna have your shore power hookup. As per usual, we'll send you out with a dongle that you'll attach to um, right in here, and then you'll connect an extension cord to your power source. The dongle is gonna live in the driver's side door. You also have an outlet out here, so if you wanna plug in twinkle lights, the stereo, whatever. Uh, you also have a max track table mount. So we make these custom in-house. They're gonna carry your max tracks, great, if for if you get stuck in mud or anything like that. Also, if you want a nice outdoor happy hour table, you just pull both of these knobs out and lower it down and there you have a table. Um, always be sure to close this up prior to driving. So to do so, you're just gonna pull it back up, pull these pins out and then make sure that they both are secured. To know if it is fully secured, you just wanna make sure that that bobble is flush with the washer. That means you are fully locked, loaded, and ready to roll. Additionally, on the exterior of the passenger side, you have a Fiamma awning. All the instructions are gonna come in your manual for how to work it, and you also have a little um, pulley that's gonna help you open it up whenever you get to camp. Do not use this if it's super windy, will break the awning. Moving all the way to the front, you have a custom front bumper this is gonna house your winch. It lives in there. Please note that if you are renting the Baja, you will not have the winch controllers. So the winch is not to be used. If you wanna try out things like four wheel low, rear, dock, diff, rear locking differentials or the winch, buy your own. These ones have to stay nice for rentals. Um, in the front bumper, we have cup holders on either side. We also have some Baja design fog lights down here and a light bar up top. Please note that it is illegal to have those while you're driving on the road. So they're great to use when you're coming up to camp or if you're on a dirt road where there's no other humans in sight. I will show you quickly where the switches are for that light bar. So up here we have our switches for the fog lights and light bar. Number one is going to be your fog lights. Number two is going to be your ambers on the light bar. And number three is your white lights on the light bar. The only other thing to know about driving this vehicle is that you are going to use the switch to the right of the wheel to change from two wheel high to four wheel high um, if, in case you're on a snowy road or anything like that. In the pass through of the vehicle, this is where your passengers can ride. We're gonna have a spare extension cord in here that you can use when you're hooking up to shore power. And this is also where your pass through, your insulated pass through is going to be.
So when you're coming in and out through the pass-through, it's nice to close up these seats, but if you need to use them, you're gonna pull on the um, cord here that lowers them down. You have a nice seat there. Please note that the seat on the driver's side, the back does not fully secure. So those have been altered from the factory original seating. So on the driver's side of the vehicle, we have our gas fill. Please be sure it takes gas, not diesel. We have our water fill up here. So on your keychain, there's gonna be a key that says water fill up H2O only. You'll use that to open this up and fill it back up. You're gonna to wanna to do that with a hose. So find a gas station with a water hookup or uh, we'll always send you out with a funnel that you'll find under the sink cabinet. You can hold that up and have a buddy hold um, five gallon water jugs above you. Lastly, on the driver's side, we have our exterior shower. The quick connect for that is gonna live under the sink. You just line the notches in the shower hose up with the notches in this receiver and turn the end piece to the right to secure. Let's step inside. All right, welcome inside. So like I talked about in the beginning of the video, when you get to camp, you're likely going to want to raise your topper. As you can see, I'm 5'3", can't stand up very comfortably in here. So you're going to come over to your actuator control panel and you are going to hit one. That is going to raise the topper to its full position. For each of the Bajas, the max height is slightly different. So just be sure to refer to the label in your vehicle that you have rented. So that's going to lift up. As I said before, make sure that you're on level ground whenever you do this and make sure that everything is out of the way of the actuators. So the actuators are two in the front, two back here. So you're just going to want to make sure that no bed sheets get in the way of this line, um, etc. You'll notice that this thing has taken us right up to 14.1. We're at max height. Good to camp. If ever you're the actuator preset does not take you to max height. You can always swivel this knob to the right. That will take it up. Or if ever it doesn't drop you all the way to point two, swivel it to the left, that will take you all the way down. However, if you're at max height or max or min low, just make sure that you're not twisting that knob, not trying to get it further down or further up. If you have kiddos on board with you, I know that this is a very fun knob to twist. I love it myself. However, really easy to burn out actuators. So you can always come into the cabinet here to the right of the fridge and unplug your actuator. So you can just lift up the top and then go ahead and unplug it so that if your kiddos decide that that's the coolest toy in this vehicle, you don't have to worry about breaking anything. While we're over here, I'll talk about some of the other systems in the vehicle. We have three different light zones, so dimmable over bed dome lights, we have our upper cab dimmable LEDs, and we have our dimmable LED dome lights for the main area here. We also have under cabinet lights, that's gonna be for either side of the vehicle. Toe kick lighting, great for nighttime. Fridge, obviously the fridge will not stay cool unless you have that on, and water pump. So in order to use the exterior shower or the sink, you gotta have the water pump on. Additionally, you have your Ricks and heat and hot water system. If you wanna use hot water, make sure you turn this guy on 15 minutes before you want to shower or do dishes with hot water as it takes about 15 minutes to heat it up. There will always be a diagram in your vehicle as to how to use the Rickson system. Be sure to refer to that when you're using it. At a high level, power button turns it on. The thing will not send heat out if it is hotter in your vehicle than it is outside. So it's just like the thermostat in your house. Um, there are different settings that you're gonna wanna do based on whether you are driving or parked or hooked up to shore power. So if you're driving, you'll hit the engine button. That means that the Rickson system is gonna pull heat from your engine. If you are parked, you're gonna wanna use furnace. That means that the Rickson is creating its own heat. Or if you're hooked into shore power, you're gonna hit electric and furnace and heat the cab that way. Again, shore power is when you are hooked up to the power source at your campsite or something like that. The remote here is for your fan. It's really close, so if you don't wanna use the remote, not a big deal. You hit the on and off button to turn it on and off. You hit that in slash out button to either pull air out of the vehicle or pull air in, depending on what you're doing. If you're cooking, we always recommend to have it pulling air out 
so it doesn't get smoky or anything in here. Also, you have some reading lights above the bed back here. So to turn those on, you're just going to press the button that gets it on and then press it again to turn it off. If you're reading for a long time, this can get a little hot. So just beware of that. Last thing I'll say about this whole system and the electric actuators is that Another thing you have to be careful of is to make sure you're not placing items on the countertops that are higher than the lowest level of the actuator. So we have stickers all around to make sure that whatever you're putting on your countertops stays below that line. I've been a key offender of this with the big peanut butter filled pretzels. That is too high and will burn out your toppers because it's smushing down on a plastic containers. So just make sure that you don't do that. Last thing up here, you have your battery monitor. So it's showing us our percentage. Right now we're at 68.2. Uh, just be sure to keep track of that to make sure that you keep those batteries above 50%. A lot of the systems in this vehicle will stop working as well if you let the batteries run too low. A few different ways that you can charge this vehicle. One, drive it. It's gonna charge it on its own. You don't have to hit any buttons, nothing. Second, you can plug it into shore power. Um, then you should see power flowing right through there. Lastly, you can charge via solar. We have 400 amps of Z-Amp solar array up here. So if it's a sunny day, you're gonna be pulling that in automatically. It should offset your usage within the vehicle. All right, so to wrap up power systems, just know that the cabinet directly to the right of the pass-through is your power systems cabinet. You shouldn't have to do anything in here while you're on your trip. But if for some reason all of your outlets stop working, you're gonna wanna hit this big red reset button on your GFCI, that should reset the system. Additionally, if you're having trouble, the topper is not working or your induction cooktop are not working, again, the plugs for those are gonna be found in this cabinet. So try unplugging them and plugging them into a different outlet within the vehicle. So more than likely, it's the outlet itself that's not working rather than the system. When it comes to the galley area of this vehicle, you have a 4.6 cubic foot fridge and freezer combo. Freezer is up here and you have a good amount of storage in the fridge area. The induction cooktop is here. So in order to work this, you have to use ferromagnetic cookware. Everything that we send you out with is ferromagnetic. You have to have the pot physically on the induction cooktop for it to work. You press the power button and then you can either use heat. That will start you at level five out of 10. You can bump it up if you need to, or temp, which will let you pick an exact temperature that you want the cooktop to work at. And then just hit that power button again when you are done. Storage is all along these uppers. Just be sure that you are always closing. You hear for that second little latch. That's your RV latch to make sure that things don't go flying out while you're going down the road. On this side of the rig, we have our body workstation sink. Again, to use it, you have to have the water pump on. And then under the sink is where we have our 30 gallon fresh water tank. So this is where you can monitor your water levels. You can see the line in this opaque tank. So if you're ever refilling, this is a great place to open up these cabinets and just see where you're at. Additionally, in this cabinet, you'll find your shower hookup and funnel if you need to fill up. Also down here, while we're here, there are some vents. These are for your Rickson system. This is where all of the heat for the cabinet is gonna come out. So make sure that it's not covered by your bags if you're trying to heat it up in here. And also make sure that the vents aren't closed. Also not going to work. Moving a little bit further back, you have some more storage next to the bed here in this drawer bank. Again, just make sure that those latch prior to heading out. And then in the uppers on this side is where you're gonna find your cookware and such. So you have French press, coffee pot, uh, mugs, ferromagnetic cookware, all of that good stuff. And then you have all of your utensils, cutting boards, etc. on the passenger side. Up here we have our queen sized fixed bed. So a few things to note about this. We have an insulating curtain surrounding this area. When you are lowering the pop top, just make sure that 
that doesn't fold in on itself and isn't getting in the way of the topper coming down. So you might have to crawl out and pull it towards yourself just to keep everything rolling smoothly. You have a skylight up here to work that. You're just going to press the button in, pull the bar towards you, and that'll open it up. To close it, again, far away from you, make sure it's over the button. For the skylight, you have blackout curtain on one side, bug screen on the other. When it comes to windows in this van, uh, truck, you have half slides all around the perimeter. So just make sure that you always lock these prior to driving. You lock them by just pressing that lever up. And then in the dinette area, you have your Arctic turn windows. So to work these, you're gonna press in on the gray button, unlock them. And press out on the window until it catches. And there you go. To get it back in, you just press up to release and then make sure that you're locking all of those back down prior to driving. Again, if you pull down, you have blackout. If you pull up, you have bug screens. This rod right here, that's what you're going to use to open up the Fiamma awning on the driver's or on the passenger side of the vehicle. Under the bench seat on the passenger side, we just have some nice storage. This is also where your fire extinguisher is going to live. Make sure that you always get this cleat behind the other one when you sit on these so that you don't break that. So you want it all the way in flush like that. On the driver's side, that's where our water um, lines are gonna run and our Rixen, so we don't recommend storing anything in there. Like in many of our rental vehicles, we have a lagoon mount table. So how these work is kind of like a lever, lefty loosey, righty tighty. In order to disengage the lever, you're just gonna press in on that button and pull out on the handle. So I'm gonna loosen this up and take the table down so that we can make the second bed. To make the second bed, we always recommend taking the top part off on its own because it is heavy and a little bit awkward. And then you're gonna go ahead and pull this off and store it somewhere smart. Then you are going to take the flat edge of the table, press it all the way flush with the left side and then let it fall down on the right, making a level sleeping area. Then you'll just go ahead and unclip the cushions on both sides. And there you have it, the second bed area. Another great place to put the table mount when you are in transit is just to pop it on the back of the table, like so. That way you don't have to worry about where you put it. Last thing I'll show you inside the truck is this pass-through. This is one of my favorite parts and it makes it so that riding in this vehicle just feels like you're riding in a normal truck rather than having to hear things clatter around. So insulated pass-through on either side, but if you want to open this up when you're at camp so that you can go through either side, you'll just go ahead and roll it up and clip it. You do the same thing on the other side and then you have a nice proper pass-through. So, that's a good overview of everything inside the vehicle. I'm gonna show you everything that you should do prior to hitting the road. So let's start with the table. You can either put the table back up, which is what I'm gonna do, or you can stow away the table leg and place the table itself under your mattress. All right, table made. Next, I'm going to go ahead and lower the actuator. So I'm gonna press the preset number two and that's gonna bring the topper down. Prior to hitting that, I've made sure that everything is off the countertops that might get in the way, and I've made sure that all of my bedding is out of the way of those actuators. So, you'll notice what I talked about is happening here, that the curtain is getting sucked in a little bit, so I'm just gonna pop up there and pull it out. All right, so this time it stopped at point three, 
the actual lowest of low that this topper gets is 0 0.2. So I'm just going to give it one bump to the left. That took it down to 0 0.2. Now that we have that down, skylight closed, everything's good in here. Let me go ahead and shut off all the lights so I'm not wasting any energy. Keep the fridge on so beer stays cold. And I'll step outside. All right, now that we're ready to roll, hit the road. Again, we're gonna grab our fob. We're gonna press that up button to close the door. You're gonna hold it the whole way up. And let off as soon as you hear the engine starting to whir down. If ever this is not working and the door is not opening or closing, we keep a spare fob in the glove box on the passenger side in the leather compartment that has the registration and all of that good stuff. The likelihood is that it is your fob that is broken, not the rear door actuators. So try it with the other fob. Also just try holding those buttons a little bit harder. Another last thing about that rear door is just making sure that it gets all the way down prior to putting weight on it. So you're gonna want it all the way down before you step on it, because that could break it as well. That wraps up this tour. Be sure to reach out if you have extra questions, um, but hopefully this gives you a good starting point to feel comfortable with the rig prior to your rental. My name is Lucy with Ross Monster Rentals. Thank you for watching and hope you have a great rest of the day.